I'm here. Come to me if you can. I'm coming, he roared as something slammed against his shoulder. A vampire appeared to block the door, and he called on his power again, causing a hole to open between the rocks, where the vamp disappeared with a scream. I won't fail you, I swear. I will not fail you, he whispered the words, desperate to get his family safe. Mick, Nevada hid her face against him. I know. Please, please help us. We're coming. Don't burn us up. I'm here. I'm coming to you. The vamps are running from me, so don't let them hurt you. He sagged against the wall for a moment. His unseen ally knew what they were up against. That was a boon. He swung the chains holding him, the heavy blocks holding them, clearing the way. He could barely see, sweat and dirt and dust blinding him. Mick hit his knees, cradling the babies, rocking to move himself up the stairs. No, no, you fucker. I didn't work this hard to finally get a dragon to lose you. The deranged screech almost broke his eardrums. He knew that was the head vamp. His name was DeMarco. He found his feet, cradling the babies close. Help me. Please promise you'll take the babies. I'll take you all out of here. I can fly. Longing hit him square in the belly. If only he had enough strength to fly away. His power was earth, though, and he'd always been an indifferent flyer at best. The important thing was that when this was over, the babies would be safe. He saw DeMarco, the bloodsucker bleeding, shards of what looked like glass covering him. Yes, yes. He swung the block, connecting with DeMarco, almost splitting the man in half with the last of his strength. A naked man ran down the stairs, lifting DeMarco's broken, bleeding body up off the floor and breathing a stream of what looked like crystal or salt in his face. The particles flayed DeMarco's skin from his face, and that vampire body gave up the ghost, dissolving to ash. Protect the babies, he pleaded. Please. Come on. Most of them are dead. The man came to him, and the chains around his wrists snapped off. Can you come to me, little one? The man asked Nevada. I can help carry you out of here with your uncle. Mick? Nevada asked. Please, baby, he's good. He hoped. Let the man be good. Good. Dragon. She went easily, making grabby hands at the boys. Dragon, go bye-bye. I can't. He held out the babies. Hold them close to you. Don't let them go. The big guy grabbed him up in the other arm, racing up the stairs. He could have cried, but he was too dry for that. Mick, Mick, Nevada's little voice rang out, singing to him. Go, go. No more vamps. Was the big guy yodeling? They were whisked along, and outside, the guy looked around, heading for a clearing. Give me some room for a moment. I'll pick you up in my claws. I don't think you have the strength to ride my back. He was put on the ground, and he collapsed in a heap, his legs giving out. Save my brother's babies. The air shimmered like the road in Death Valley on a hot day, and then an enormous dragon appeared, crystalline white and amethyst in color, probably the biggest Mick had ever seen. The beautiful one clomped over to him, not so graceful on the ground. One huge paw was opened back to the ground, and a velvety soft snout pushed him, holding his niece and nephews onto it, a ring of claws closing around him tight enough that no one would fall, but not tight enough to hurt. Keep them as warm as you can. It's not far, but it's high. I will protect them with my life. He blinked up, tears freezing on his face as they rose into the sky. He would not let his babies fall.